Hello, I'm Sam Caligioni from Dogfish Head Brewery. I'm here to talk to you today about hops. And you might be wondering, why am I dressed like a farmer? Because hops grow on farms. Uh, we love seeing all the other American breweries do really fun stuff with hop forward beers, but we want to take the early part of this year, 2013, and really celebrate you know, just how diverse uh, and broad uh, and dynamic Dogfish Head's portfolio of IPA-centric beers really is. So we're calling this period of celebration a hop eclipse now, and it's really uh, a, an explosive uh, celebration of the off-centered, hop-centric family of Dogfish Head beers. We'll be doing a whole series of 40 or 50 beer dinners around the country. Uh, check dogfish.com for more information on, on where those beer dinners are happening near you. Uh, those beer dinners, some of them will feature Rising Binds, 90-minute uh, Apra Hop, Burton Baton. There'll be Randall's, the machines that we came up with and, and developed, which are real-time dry hopping uh, beer infusing devices uh, used at the point of service so consumers can actually see and feel and, and smell how hops uh, change their beer uh, as it's being as it's being poured. Uh, these dinners will be incorporating a really special new glass that we'll be proud to unveil in early uh, February. Um, uh, personal Randall Juniors uh, that we're going to start uh, selling yet again, so that you can bring this uh, this this idea of infusing your beers with different spices, particularly hops, home with you. Um, We opened our brewery in 95 as the smallest brewery in the country, and from the outset our mission was off-centered ales and to look at the entire culinary landscape for potential ingredients. But very early on in our lives, we fell in love with hops and started to innovate in this one style. Outside of IPAs, Dogfish really doesn't do a lot with styles of beer. We kind of come up with our own thing. Uh, but IPAs we really, really love and found ways that we could still put our really off-centered thumbprint on the IPA category and our, and our first one was actually India Indian Brown Ale which I brewed for the first time in 97 in Rehoboth and I believe it's the first bottled darker black IPA that uh, was bottled in America and it's still one of our best selling uh, core beers and our brewers kind of feel it's one of the unsung heroes of our portfolio really roasty hoppy uh, beautifully balanced uh, uh, beer. Uh, but, but in 99 I was in uh, our pub in Rehoboth and I was heating up water to a five barrel batch of something and as I was making my coffee I was watching TV and a chef show came on TV and in the segment the chef was showing that if he added little pinches of fresh ground pepper to a soup the entire time it simmered. It made the, the, the flavors of that spice more evenly and uh, with more complexity woven into that uh, soup. And I kind of had an epiphany moment. I was like, whoa, what if I kind of took that top, that, that philosophy and process and adopted it to the brewing practice where traditionally in brewing you add hops to a beer usually like twice, once early in the, bo in the boil for bitterness and once at the end of the boil for aroma. And I thought, well, what if you got away from that and took that a big volume of hops, but just kind of slowly dosed in a tiny, tiny bit of hops the entire time the beer boils. And I went out on Route 1, and I, in that time, a thrift store, Salvation Army, ironically enough, is now a, a, a liquor store, one of our best liquor stores in the state. Uh, and I went in there and found what I was looking for, which was one of those vibrating 70s football games that I remembered had been in there when I was in there buying uh, flannel shirts uh, months before. I bought it, brought it to the pub, rigged it up with a, a, a plastic bucket I perforated holes into, a couple chunks of wood, some duct tape, and I loaded the hot pellets into the bucket uh, that was taped to the, to the football field, and just by changing the angle of the football field over the boil kettle, I could regulate the pace at which the hot pellets were vibrating down that field and into the boiling beer, with the goal of having just a tiny stream, one hot pellet, hitting the top of the boiling beer the entire time it boiled, which in that case was for 90 minutes. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that 90 minute was born before uh, 60 minute. We began bottling uh, 90 minute in either 99 or 2000, and 60 minute wasn't bottled for a couple years later. But at any rate, we brewed it, and uh, Eureka, the concept of 
continual hopping was born and it worked. Basically how it works is we can take a large volume of hops and with those tiny additions continually, uh, there is no boil hops or early bitter hops. There is no aroma hops. Everything kind of weaves into each other and the complexity shows itself in our continually hop beers by having them be intensely uh, you know, flagrantly hoppy in, in aroma and, in, and in, in taste, but not crushingly bitter. If we added the same volume of hops that we add to our continually hops beers all at once or in two increments as is tradition, they would be way out of whack, uh, unpalatably, unpalatably bitter. Uh, but you, by using our unique method, they're, they're really unique and really enjoyable. So. One of the niches that Dogfish Head has worked hard on since the mid to late 90s in the world of IPA is fruit infused IPAs. Many, many hop varieties have uh, fruity characteristics, probably the most recognizable in America, sort of the grapefruity notes that come from Cascade. Uh, but what we did, what I, what I did at the pub was just would play around with different fruits that came into the kitchen of our restaurant and introduced them in different batches of beer. And we found some hop varieties that work really well with apricots. And that is how our April hop was born. April hop, we now brew thousands of barrels of it every year. It's our very popular spring seasonal beer that comes out in um, around March 1st. Um, recently, as part of our music collaboration series, we've been fortunate to work with artists from as diverse as Pearl Jam, Grateful Dead, uh, Bonnie Prince Billy, uh, and one of the ones, Miles Davis, and we, we got to work with the, the, the family of Robert Johnson, the famous bluesman. And uh, uh, Robert Johnson's mentor was Blind Lemon Jefferson, a Texas guitarist. So as a shout out to his mentor, one of the experiments we ended up doing was with dried organic uh, lemon flesh and lemon slices. Uh, and so our hellhound, hellhound, hellhound on your ale, named after the Robert Johnson song, Hellhound on your trail, um, is brewed with really lemony citrusy hops that are magnified by the addition of lemon flesh and uh, lemon peel to that beer. We also have another sort of fruit infused IPA that uh, we're really, really excited about that we're introducing in kind of year round and for every season we're going to do a big batch in bottles and send it out to all our distributors uh, that uh, is going to be pretty, pretty unique uh, coming out March 1. Um, over here we have um, Rising Binds, which is the collaborative beer we do with our pals at Sierra Nevada, uh, one of my favorite hop-centric breweries in America, kind of the granddaddy of hop-centric American craft breweries. Uh, with this one, what we did is we introduced both of our, each of our unique sort of hopping techniques into one beer for the first time. So the uh, Imperial IPA done by Sierra is their Torpedo, uh, and they have a device kind of post-fermentation for dry hopping called a Torpedo that allows the beer to move through this uh, container with a filter bed of, uh, of uh, whole leaf hops. Uh, and then that's on downstream. Upstream from that in Rising Vines, we use Dogfish Head's unique continually hopping, continual hopping uh, technology. Our current machine for continual hopping is called Sofa King Hoppy. So Rising Vines on the hot side goes through Sofa King Hoppy. And then on the cold side, post ferment, it goes through a torpedo on loan to us from our pals at uh, Sierra as it's on route, that torpedo from Chico, California, down to be installed in their new brewery in North Carolina. Uh, our 75 minute, which is a uh, naturally carbonated bottle condition uh, beer that we do from uh, my family farm in Western Mass. We get maple syrup and we dose that in uh, at the time of bottling, so uh, you get a little bit of maple earthy notes behind the earthy hop notes in that beer. But we have our old pal 120 minute that I haven't talked about. This is the world's strongest uh, IPA at usually roughly around 18% ABV is where it comes in. Um, this is one of the beers that you kind of, it, it's very subjective whether you like a beer aged or, or not aged, fresh. And usually with hoppy beers, you want to drink them fresh. This one gets awesome sort of grapefruity, marmalade -y character when it has some oxidized sherry notes uh, after a year or two. So if you like that kind of stuff in your beer, buy a few bottles of 120 and 
put a couple down in your uh, cellar. I also have not talked about uh, our, our Burton Baton, which is uh, kind of our way of, of, uh, of saying, you know, while there's some great West Coast hoppy beers and most of the commercial hops made and used in craft beers are grown uh, in the Northwest, the IPA style in America really uh, gained traction on the East Coast. Uh, there's uh, a, one, a one-time great independent New Jersey-based brewery called Ballantines in the 40s and 50s was brewing something called Burton Ale. Um, a, a shout out to the Burton area beers like Bass and stuff in England, but it was a big wood age, super high IBU intensive, higher ABV, really special beer that they didn't even bottle and distribute. They just gave special bottles from the brewery to dignitaries, friends, distributors, folks like that. So Burton Baton is our way of saying we want to keep take the baton from the old school East Coast IPA brewers and keep that tradition going. It's a it's a bigger uh, uh, IPA that's also uh, aged uh, in our big wood tanks. We have the largest wood beer aging tanks uh, in America that have been built since pro before Prohibition. Uh, each of those. Um, so check out dogfish.com for what's happening with a hop eclipse now and support your local breweries that support the hop farmers of America. Cheers.